Come on. So settle down over there. Okay, so just so you know, when it comes to the sport of water polo, there are no horses in the water other than my teammates. It's a tough crowd tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, you're going to buy me another drink? Oh, I love it. Margarita. <laughs> on the rocks. Um, just so you all know, we're here with the Federation of Gay Games, who oh, that's good. the Gay Games will be celebrating its 30th anniversary this coming year. However, it was on the 4th of November in 1981 that San Francisco Arts and Athletics uh, was incorporated as a nonprofit in the lovely state of California. So technically, next week becomes the 30th anniversary of the Gay Games. So we will have a whole year of wonderful celebrations for you, including our 30th anniversary anniversary celebration next year in Cleveland, Ohio, where we will be in 2014 for Gay Games 9. All right, little housekeeping here. For those of you who are just coming in, we have some food over here near the noisy section, the peanut gallery. Uh, make sure to get your drinks from the bartender. The drinks are nice and stiff. Raffle tickets! Jeez, tough audience. That's the next thing on the list. Raffle tickets! Who wants to buy a raffle ticket? Boy, okay, really excited. Alright, raffle tickets. What I need, where's Mikey Witt? Alright, why don't you come up on stage? I need some help with you on this one. Alright, the ticket prices, here's what it is. $5, you get 18 tickets. $10, you get 36 tickets. $20, you get 90 tickets. And for $50, you get the one that's named after my favorite porn star, the Anaconda. 300 tickets. Now, Mikey, okay, if I'm the masters of ceremonies, he's my slave of ceremonies. Mikey, tell them what they get when they win. What happens, we're dividing the funds into thirds. A third will go to the Federation. Our third will go to Outsport Toronto for their help here. And the third will be going to the winners. We'll divide up the final third into two or three different pots, get it shared out, and we'll cash night. We've also been told, never not get to, we are going to get one away, one base registration for 2014 for Cleveland. And that's probably worth about 150 bucks. So that's worth a ticket right there. We will be selling throughout the night. He'll make a last call some night during the evening. And thank you very much for coming in. And why did you leave me on the stage alone? Yeah. The awards we're going to be giving out will be for Volunteer of the Year, Medal of Honor, the Local Hero, and our Legacy Awards. So, actually, our first one is for Volunteer of the Year, and these are for individuals who are uh, no, they are no, they are neither board members nor delegates, but who through their time and efforts contribute to the goals of the Federation and the Gay Games Movement. So here to present our first award, once again, please welcome to the stage the uh, event chair for tonight, a member of International Gay Bowling Organization. Please welcome from Los Angeles, Valley Village, Mike Witt. Thank you. Our first award tonight goes to Volunteer of the Year, the male recipient. Now for those people who are not technically efficient, like myself, there are some people who just get it. Robert Bartlett is one of those people who just get it. I don't get it. I plug in a computer and it will blow up on me. We need people who are technically savvy, who know the ins and outs of computers and programs. We need someone like this. This year we honor Computer junior Genius. Our male volunteer of the year is Israel Wright. He's been affiliated with the organization since Chicago hosted since Chicago hosted Gay Games in 2006. He became a delegate for Team Chicago in 2006 and attended his first meeting in Lyon, France. He dove in and became, excuse me, he dove in, became a part of culture, technology, and cultural committees. His expertise in the visual arts helped bring these communities to life. He also worked with Gene Dermody with the maintenance and structure of the technology aspects. 
He then became co-chair of technology in 2007 and later officer in 2008. He continues to offer his talents as an FGG volunteer, as a technical administrator for the communication systems and international organizations like FGG, and we rely on him. We rely on Gene. We could not survive without these people. Though as you know, Israel could not be here, we want to honor his contributions to the Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to applaud for our male volunteer, Israel Wright. And accepting the award for Israel will be his teammate from Chicago, Kai Chang. I think we know who took the flame. I know that song by heart. I bet you do. Uh, Mikey, who's doing the cake? Are you doing cake? Oh, Mark is doing cake. Okay. And uh, make sure Mr. Video knows which one's going in. All right. Um, just so you know, the FGG Volunteers of the Year are recognized with the Cape Town Cup, which was presented by the Mayor of Cape Town to the Federation during our 2008 Annual General Assembly, which was held in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, all right, for our Volunteer of the Year for the female, uh, will be a gentleman that I had the pleasure of meeting for the first time last year. We all know him by the wonderful blog that he does for the Federation of Gay Games. An expatriate living in Paris, France, please welcome to the stage Federation of Gay Games board member, Mark Neymar. Um, actually, we're very pleased because uh, we don't have to give Kate a medal. She's already got her medal. Uh, Kate organized a really incredible dinner uh, in September to welcome our two latest ambassadors, Matthew Mitchum, who some of you may have met in Cologne. Who knows Matthew Mitchum? Yeah. Yeah. Biblical sense. <laughs> and Blake Skellerup, uh, an Olympic ice uh, speed skater. That's just one of the thing, many things that Kate has done as a volunteer recently. She's been a volunteer for a very long time. Uh, as a cycling a sports coordinator, triathlon sports coordinator, uh, she's been vice president for diversity on the board, she's been, she's my job on the board prior to me. Uh, and we want to recognize, we, we gave her this award because uh, she's a great example of somebody whose real interest is serving the gay games movement on the board, as a volunteer, wherever she can. So uh, uh, we normally had a video of the presentation, uh, but it somehow got lost between Sydney and Toronto. So we're sorry about that, but you'll be able to see it online very soon. All right, thank you, Mark. And just for clarification, Mark is the Federation of Gay Games Vice President of External Affairs. Now, for our next section, it is called the Medal of Honor. And uh, the Medal of Honor is given uh, to two individuals who have really gone above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, not only with the Federation of Gay Games and the Gay Games Movement, but in the greater sports world at large. Uh, both of these medals were presented earlier in the year. Uh, the first one was for Bruno Ozenac from Paris. Uh, Bruno, I actually had the pleasure of meeting 10 years ago when Toronto did a fabulous job of hosting the largest IGLA in our entire 20 year history. Um, and as you can see, he is the outgoing president of Fédération Sportive Gay et Lesbien for his promotion of the values of the gay games and his contributions to a constructive partnership with the Federation. So thank you, Bruno, for all the things you have done. Now this next medal is someone who is very special to me because she's one of my teammates at West Hollywood Aquatics. Um, Dr. Jessica Seaton. Now, you will see a video presentation that we did with Jessica a couple weeks ago. She not only is a longtime volunteer and leader with International Gay and Lesbian Aquatics and U.S. Master Swimming, but for many years, Jessica has remained on the top ten list for the women's breaststroke at U.S. Master Swimming. And uh, let's go to the video, if we may, Peter. Federation of Gay Games for honoring me with the Federation of Gay Games Medal of Honor. This award 
is in recognition for my volunteer work with the Gay Games, LGBT Sports, and Master Swimming. When I joined West Hollywood Robotics in 1990, right after the Gay Games 3 in Vancouver, I became part of a proactive team. A team of people of vision, with whom I was fortunate to work on many projects affecting gay and lesbian, as well as mainstream athletics. West Hollywood Aquatics was the first primarily gay and lesbian master swim club. It was a co-founder of the International Gay and Lesbian Aquatics, or IGLA, and has had and continues to have people in leadership positions in IGLA, with the Federation of Gay Games, and locally with Southern Pacific Master Swimming, as well as nationally in United States Master Swimming. I appreciate the Federation's recognition for doing something I love, participating in and volunteering with swimming. And I'd like to wish happy 30th anniversary to West Hollywood Aquatics and to the Gay Games. Thank you and see you in Cleveland in 2014. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, and just a reminder, raffle tickets. Raffle tickets. All right, so let's, all right, we're gonna do a test here. If you were to purchase 18 raffle tickets, how much would that cost? $400. Don't get sassy with me, mister. $5, very good. Okay, oh. okay, how much would it cost you if you were to purchase the Anaconda? I cut him off. $50 for 300 tickets. Now that's a great deal. And just think how much that will save you on your base registration if you are that lucky winner. Oh, where's the next one back when you need them? Okay. So, after our wonderful Legacy Awards, we have the Local Hero. Now, the Local Hero Awards are given to uh, individuals who have done a significant contribution, and in this case, to Toronto and to the uh, province of Ontario. So, um, presenting our first award will be the female co-president of the Federation of Gay Games, a woman who knows how to talk like a sailor because she is one. Please welcome another expatriate from Paris, France, female co-president, Emmy Ritt. Hey, no. the new faces here in Toronto. That's why we're here. Rob, a uh, native Torontoan, I believe. I've known Rob since 2003. Uh, he's been working with us on site selection and fundraising and many other projects. And he served as chair of site selection, was a site inspector going to the cities of Atlanta, Chicago, Paris, Johannesburg, and Cologne. Uh, he's also served on the board of Toronto, Team Toronto, for nine years. Uh, his first gay games experience was in Vancouver in 1990. How many of you were there too? Uh, he's helped uh, he helped many teams um, in Sydney and in Chicago. Um, like most of us, he's um, given a lot of his life uh, and his uh, personal resources to the gay games. He's a bowler, uh, a member of the Toronto Maple Leaf Classic Tournament. He's been the organizer there and he's attended a lot of tournaments in, in North America as well. Um, he's always there when we need him. So Rob, thanks. Where are you? Come on up here. Come on down. Of the Federation of Gay Games. He's a current board member. He is 
one of the outstanding members of Wrestlers Without Borders. And in case you ever want to know what the passion is that keeps this movement going, trust me, this man is part of that passion. And among everything else, I am proud to say that Gene Dermody is my friend. <laughs> Before anybody asks, like, what did you do with the real gene? It's just a change in medication. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Stephanie Johnson, our local hero. Uh, Stephanie Johnson is a go-getter. She served the LGBT community for over three decades. We do not have enough time to go into all of her accomplishments, but here are just a few. At, in 1980, she served for several years as a board, of, board member of the Homophile Association of London, Ontario, and in various executive positions with the LGBT Softball League. In the 1990s, she started her work with IGBO, International Gay Bowling Association, by serving on several committees. She helped in Vancouver and in the 1990 Gay Games and in the 1998 Gay Games in Amsterdam. Starting in the year 2000, Stephanie hit her stride. She served as the first female vice president of IGBO and was elected co-chair of the sports committee of the Federation. She was then elected vice president of the Federation and was honored with the Federation's Female in Sports Award just a few years ago. She is currently working on a campaign to end the bullying of gay youth. As you can see, as you can see, she is more than just a hero, she is a superhero. Hero. Unfortunately, Stephanie lost her father last Sunday and cannot make this event. I have to say personally, Stephanie was my co-chair on sports for a very difficult period from Montreal through Chicago. And I have to say, she really kept me grounded. She was a very stable, logical, methodical person. When I was ranting and raving about the excesses of pink flamingo and uh, drug testing. So, I mean, I have to say, Stephanie was really, really important to keep me sane in those days. I, I have a lot of respect for her, so give her a round of applause. Accepting the award for pink will be her teammate, Mike Ferguson. So Stephanie couldn't be here tonight because of her dad passing away, but she wanted me to pass on that she's very honored to receive this award, and I'll make sure that she receives this award on your behalf, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Of course, our thoughts go out to you and your family. All right, now for the Legacy Awards. If I can find where the notes are. Sorry about this. All right, for the Legacy Awards, our first presentation will be for the Member Award. To present that award will be a gentleman originally from Chicago. He is the current Vice President of Membership for the Federation of Gay Games, Paul Oosterbrook. On your left. On your left. Wow, how did you get there? Sneaky. Well, no, I'm surprised. I feel like this is a triple play for bowling. First Rob Lavery, then Stephanie Johnstone, and now the membership award goes to Igbo. Yay! The International Gay Bowling Organization oh. Oh. is known. The International Gay Bowling Association is known worldwide. Its history is rich and diverse. It was founded in 1980 with only six member cities and has since grown to over 200 bowling leagues and 24 tournaments. Igbo is considered to be the largest gay and lesbian sport organization in the world. On August 29, 1980, the Intercity Athletic Club of Los Angeles held a softball bowling tournament. That's what I meant about a triple play. That's right, a softball bowling tournament. Members from Los Angeles, Houston, Milwaukee, New York City, San Diego, and Toronto met to see if they could organize a yearly event. This was a way of getting our community together on both a social and sport level, and it's continued to grow ever since. Igbo has tackled many social issues and presently has, unfortunately, 22 AIDS panels stored in San Francisco. Igbo tournaments and leagues have literally raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities around the world. The Federation is extremely proud to give Igbo its membership award, and here to accept the award is Mike Ferguson, co-director of Igbo's annual 2011 tournament in Toronto, 
and Toby Pinot, Igbo representative to the Federation. awards recognize outstanding individuals or groups that do promote the values of participation, inclusion, and personal best. So for to present our next uh, Legacy Award of Social Justice is a gentleman who has also been around this organization for quite some time and has put a lot of passion into it. He is most known for being the spearhead for the International Rainbow Memorial Relay. Um, a gentleman who basically uh, roller skated across this country on behalf of the Gay Games. And he's from Team New York and last year's recipient of the Waddell Cup Award. Please welcome to the stage my friend, Brent Nicholson Earl. decided to return to Africa for our annual meeting in 2008. One of our goals was to meet LGBT athletes, artists, and activists from Cape Town and the entire region. Among those we met was Ndume Funda. She was the lead volunteer for the meeting. She staffed the office, provided any assistance needed, and quietly prepared our updated agendas, our motion forms, and so on. Later at the meeting, we had an opportunity to hear her voice. She spoke to us about something of which most of us had never heard. She spoke about corrective rape. Since the prevailing belief in South Africa and other parts of Africa is that lesbians don't really exist, and if any are suspected to be such, they are in danger of suffering the most punitive means of correction. In South Africa's black townships, women athletes, whether they be lesbian or not, are particular targets for this heinous crime. Ndume spoke to us of her friends who had been raped, who had contracted AIDS after being raped, who had become pregnant after being raped, who had died of injuries after being raped, who had killed themselves after being raped. Ndumi also told us her story, and she told the world through the organization she founded, Luleke Sizwe, with the help of a petition on change.org, she engaged the world to tell the South African government that it could no longer remain silent about this outrageous issue. The Gay Games family was part of this effort, helping the petition to reach its intended target when it was looking difficult to achieve. And I'm happy to report that it worked. After resisting several calls to meet with activists, the Ministry of Justice finally agreed to talk with them. And from those talks has come a working group on which Undumi sits. But this struggle is far from over. And Undumi still regularly faces death threats and at times still has to disappear to safe houses. By presenting our Social Justice Legacy Award to Ndumi Funda, we are sending a message, albeit a symbolic one, to tell Ndumi that in her fight against this abomination, the Federation of Gay Games remains by her side. Congratulations.
You know, sometimes we have a lot of fun with the gay games, but uh, obviously uh, we're very lucky to live uh, where we do. And there are many people around this world who don't have the luxury and the liberties that we have. And uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that I did have the opportunity to work with Tom Waddell in those first few years. And using sport as a tool to end oppression against homosexuality, sexism, and racism will always be there in this organization as we move forward. So as much fun as we do get to have, uh, this is done for a serious reason. So thank you again for me. Okay, for our next award, it's going to be for the local sports organization. And the woman who is going to present this, let's see, she's from Team Region. She plays badminton and martial arts, so don't mess with her, okay? Racquetball? Oh, she'll hit you. No, she'll hit you with her fish. So please welcome to the stage from Munchen, Germany, Bettina Dietmann Winter. I didn't do anything right now. <laughs> this year, the Federation recognizes a relatively young organization as its legacy award for outstanding sport organization to the Toronto Gay Football League. zero to 120 players in only two years. They have members of the LGBT community as well as the straight community. They show that the LGBT community varies in size and talent. Mixing men and women shows their dedication to equality. Yet they go further. This month they sponsored an all-female football league. They just put together the first Canadian team to go to the Gay Bowl in Houston, Texas. Well, I'm coming from Germany. In Germany, there are not so many players who play American football. We have men and women who play football. Um, but that's a minority sport for us in Germany. So I've never seen a flag football team game sorry, in my life. Uh, so when I hear that their team names, teams have names like the Rhinos, Menace, Wolfhounds, Knights, Stallions, Outlaws, Mariners, and the Leprechauns. I'm really curious to see what they are all about. Leprechauns. We're still learning. There are many organizations with a long and proud history. These pioneers have made it just a little bit easier for new organizations like the TGFL. But that doesn't make their vitality any less worthy of recognition. And at the end of the time when the role of LGBT sport with respect to the wider community is a subject of debate, we are happy to recognize a group that symbolizes the Federation's commitment to sport that brings people together, whatever their gender or sexual, sexual orientation. So the Legacy Award for Outstanding Sport Organization 2011 goes to Toronto Gay Football League. footballer Sid Ziegler and Jim Bazinski who run Outsports.com. So we better get some good coverage on this guys, okay? <laughs> yeah. 
I just, uh, for you guys who don't know us, we run around and chase each other's flags and pull the flags off. Um, <laughs> one of my dreams for this league was to get as many people introduced, gay, straight, whatever, to the sport of football in Toronto because there was nothing here before. And I'd really like to thank the Federation of Gay Games for honoring us with this award. It was kind of a surprise to us because we are such a young league, but we're really, really proud to accept it. And we really work hard to fulfill the principles of the gay games, especially inclusion. We've worked hard to get more women into the league. We moved from six to 16 women this year, and we have straight guys, straight girls. We're really, we need people to play. So whoever wants to come play, come out and play. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> in American baseball, well, you have in Canada too, what's called the seventh inning stretch. Oh. All right, so we're about, we're almost finished. However, this is last call for raffle tickets. So while we're doing those raffle tickets, I know you mean, you didn't? Fantastic. Wow, good. Okay, I'm a German student for one month, so I get to practice what little I can. So guess what today is? Do you want to tell how old you are? In Deutsch? 42. Oh, does anyone know what that means? And you guys don't count. You can't say it. Oh, okay, that works. That works. 42. Very good. Okay. But, as, by the way, are your other cheeks as rosy? Actually, he's so sweet, like a little rabbit. But watch out, because he's got a really mean boyfriend over there. So, are we ready? On the count of three. Eins, zwei, drei. Happy birthday to you. measures, that's all the entertainment we can provide tonight. <laughs> Unless Armin has a partner here because he was a medalist uh, in dance sport. Uh, Come on, look at those legs, they're great. All right, for our next presentation, this is for the Straight Ally Award. There's a gentleman who has worked with, uh, he served as the treasurer for the Chicago Games in 2006. He is the current male president for the Federation of Gay Games, and he uh, competes in swimming. So please welcome to the stage a gentleman who lives not too far from my mother in the Chicago area, Kurt Dahl. I don't think I need to introduce our next honoree in this room, but just in case, I wanted to tell you a bit about Brian Burke. Brian Burke is the president and general manager of the Maple Leafs, Toronto's national hockey league team. And for the benefit of Vessel, that's not field hockey. <laughs> After a career as a player, Brian Burke became a manager working for teams in Hartford, Anaheim, and Vancouver before joining the Maple Leafs in 2008. He is respected in his field and is an outstanding sports manager. Brian Burke is also an outstanding father. And when his son Brendan came to him and told him he was gay, Brian behaved as we hope every father would. He told his son he loved him, and he even more important, he showed the world he loved him. When Brendan died, far too young, Brian Burke and Brendan's br brother, Patrick, who also works for the NHL, became very public advocates to the fight against homophobia and sport. This is not just a nice thing to do, it's an essential thing to do. The fight for LGBT rights and the dignities is our fight, but we cannot win without allies. In every social movement, to support, the support of allies has been required. 
With our Straight Ally Legacy Award, we are honoring those who stand by our side. People like Brian Burke, Patrick Burke, people in athletics on the field, in management, in coaching, and in the stands. Brian Burke is traveling today and could not be with us. Representing him will be Christina Flynn, coordinator for community and player programming for the Maple Leafs, but Brian has done us the honor of preparing a video message for us. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brian Burke, President and General Manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm sorry I couldn't join you tonight, as I am very flattered and honored to receive this award. The lovely Miss Christina Flynn from our staff will accept the award in my place. However, a few words. To the Federation of Gay Games, thank you for the hard work you do on behalf of the LGBT community. Uh, obviously, I got involved in this through my son's work. I'm trying to carry on his work. Uh, tragically, we lost him about a year and a half ago, uh, but his memory lives on and we're going to continue his work. So I was honored to get the news that I've received this award. I'm sorry I cannot attend and receive it in person, but I am there in spirit. Thank you very much. Once again, Christina Flynn. I mean, Brian said it himself, um, I can't tell you how much it's an honor to be around Brian every day and to see how passionate he is um, about this cause, about um, really promoting this work. And uh, he is, as he said, so honored to, to accept this award. And I personally am really honored to accept it on his behalf um, and on behalf of the Holberg family. So thank you very much. All right, we're going to get to uh, the raffle after one more award. Our last award is for women in sports. And here to present that will be uh, a nominee for the Federation of Gay Games Board of Directors, a woman from Team Colorado, a pharmacist. So when you have enough headaches, she's the one to go to. Please welcome Sonia Hakez Lewis. is huge in Colorado, so I can't wait to take my pictures back to tell everybody that I had a chance to meet Angela. So last year, on November 8th, 2010, Angela James was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame here in Toronto. She is one of only two women uh, to be so honored. We are honored and proud to have Angela accept our Legacy Award for Women in Sports. She is a leader in her community and in our LGBT community. She's a proud Canadian. She led the Canadian women's hockey team to four world titles. I want to get a full story on that later. <laughs> she was and is the only African Canadian to captain a national hockey team. Her number eight was retired at her alma mater, Seneca College, where she excelled not, yeah, I heard the chair, Seneca College, where she excelled not only in hockey, but in softball, and where she now serves as the director of athletics and continuing to contribute to the world of sport. Angela and her partner of over 15 years, here she comes, <laughs> uh, Angela McDonald, have three children, they have worked tirelessly to promote women's hockey. She hopes to help girls achieve their dreams. You know you have made it when they name an award after you. And in 2008, Angela James Bowl was created. It is an award given to the, annually to the top scorer in the Canadian Women's Hockey League. And I just found out tonight, Angela has actually been to a gay games. She participated in the 1994 New York Games with Toronto hockey team, which I believe won the gold medal. That's what we're thinking about. So how about that? How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, Angela James.
to uh, receive this award here tonight uh, when I was asked if I could come down to Woody's and uh, receive this award. Um, it's been a long time. I live in Oak Ridges, north of the city. I have three children and uh, my partner's at home and I'm like, you know, where's Woody's? <laughs> I haven't been in Woody's and how do I get to Church Street? It's been that long. But, um, you know, it's it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, we uh, were fortunate uh, some, times ago, some time ago before children to participate in the game games um, in New York City and, and what a blast that was. And, you know, I'm sure the work that uh, your committee's doing and uh, the outstanding uh, um, award winners here tonight, uh, I congratulate you. And, uh, again, it's just a pleasure and I'm very honored and touched uh, by this award. Tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I need I need my security blanket here again. Okay, so what's the deal on the raffle now? We're gonna pull it in five minutes. I want more tickets sold. All right, so, <laughs> so Toby, ticket we will ignore you. Ticket we'll pester you to buy. Ticket we'll be here. <laughs>